I met a girl one day, Amy. And uh, for me, it was love at first sight. And I was gonna treat her like you could, the best you could treat anyone in their life. She loves him. Like no one else. I felt as I, I hit my 20s and fell in real love. That is, it was possible. Oh, the, the picket fence, the, the uh, Canadian dream was, was there. For his attention. We were man and wife the first time she walked into my house, man. And definitely the first time she woke up in my bed. I, we were always engaged to be married, always meant to be together. I wanted to build a family and have a kid. With Amy, you know, I had that chance to uh, to do everything and, and to walk the right road. We built together, me and Amy, and she, she made me want to be better. I was thrilled. I was blessed. You know, I was like, all right, now I have a future. My father died at, when I was 11. I could just I pretty much say I was out of control. I was drinking by 12. So when I hit 16, 17, an instrument was around and I started playing it. It was always a good place for me to escape to. I was gonna play some of these songs that I've always written. I was gonna go play them. And then once I started going up, I started, uh, I started really digging it. All those knots, gone dust, the wind or dark. Look in your heart, you need to still feel close to her. Kept on going back and getting up there bare with a acoustic guitar and singing what I'd wrote that week, you know? We got ourselves a nice little co-op townhouse and, uh, you know, we had a real good shot at, at being comfortable. For a whole year, maybe two years, I worked midnights like 12 hours every day. We went in at eight and we finished at eight in the morning. You know, all I had to do was, was go to this box factory and technically pick up boxes that fell on the floor. <laughs> that was it. So I'd come home and, you know, pretty much sleep till maybe three or something like that, two or whatever. And then, you know, either maybe she was at work, but we, we didn't see each other for a lot there within the last two years. Things would be hot and cold for everything. Would be really great for a couple months, like it was in the beginning, for a few years, and then it would just change. There was always something wrong that I was doing, so I started eliminating things with Amy. Okay, if it's because I have the odd beer, I won't drink no more. So for like three years, I didn't even drink one beer, nothing, Any, anything that that could cause a problem in our relationship, in our future, and that I thought. I had control of changing, I changed it. So I tried to, you know, change my hours and work day shift. I said, okay, well, you know, I'm gonna leave because it's just, it's just something's not right here, you know what I mean? You don't seem like you love me. And I leave for a week or two and move all my shit out. And she'd call me up and say, let's, let's do it again. And I would come running back, man. She was, she was, the, she was my true love. I called her up at her friend's house one night. Just to, I was going to work, I was just seeing what she was doing. And she, she was trying to get me back on the midnight shift. <laughs> After all the, all the shit of me being on midnight, she was trying to get me back on the midnight shift. Something inside me said, something is not right here. So I actually went over to the place where they were at. I said, okay, I'm going to work, I'll see you later. But I actually stopped over there. And when I got to the door, I heard a big ruckus in the house and I was like, oh no. So I walk in, sure enough, there's another guy there. We sat down and I was going to give her X amount of money and you know what I mean? I was, I was, we we're going to split the things accordingly and we drew up a little contract that night and uh, we gave each other a hug and that was it. It was the true ending. I learned to kind of be more in tune with my emotions and, and, tr and more introspective on things. So. I took it as just another life chapter, so to say. So I moved out and that was it. And I got a, a call a month later and saying Amy had killed herself. 
If I keep holding on Will my memory stay clear So you had to go And I have to stay here But the strangest thing today So far away But you feel so close I'm not gonna question that anyway From wherever you are A year before she killed herself, I sat her dad down and I told him she talked to me about killing herself. And she knew it was true. She knew she had these thoughts and feelings. And he just and he said, Is that true? Would you do that? And she's like, No. And it, almost a year to the day she did. I never felt guilty for what happened to Amy. I never felt like I was responsible for anything because I wasn't. I didn't cause Amy to kill herself. I don't know why Amy killed herself. She was, felt guilt, maybe shame. And that night, she was drunk. And Amy doesn't drink. That night, there was 12, 13 bottles of beer found in the house. I'd been laid off from work. I got laid off from work maybe a couple, a couple months after Amy died. I lost my job. My chick dies, I <laughs> <No> go home. <laughs> my dog was, was taken from me, my dog. Her parents were obviously bitter. They could blame me as much as they wanted. I didn't mind. Blame me, please blame me, but don't, don't blame yourself. Like her, her dad was the one who bought her the beer that night. How does, how does that guy, how does, he, how does he not blame himself? You know, her mom knew everything that was going on. The only one that knew things was her mom. Her mom and her friend. And her mom didn't do nothing to try to steer her clear. Her mom had done the same thing to her dad by cheating and lying. And they broke up that family. I loved her. I would have forgave her. I obviously would have been really pissed off. You know what I mean? But I, I know in my heart I, I could have forgave her. I, I could, at least I would get a, some sort of understanding of what was going on for those last two years together. It was complete, complete... Madness to me. I didn't, I didn't understand what was going on. I could have forgave her. All I could think of the word was just tragedy and sadness. And it just couldn't escape from me. I couldn't get rid of it. Anytime I, I thought of anything, I just I literally bust out crying. My brother said something to me. He's like, it stuck with me too. He's like, this isn't the defining moment of your life. Some people are at the end. Some people are in the middle. Some people are almost there in life. But for me, at that moment then, I, I was at the beginning again. People ask you, what do you do best? What's your talent? And I had to answer them honestly and say, I kind of write music. Bernie Candy let me uh, find something that I didn't know I had in me. Being able to get up on that stage and just connect and get the energy going, it's, uh, I didn't realize how therapeutic it was for me. In life, when you just put down those inhibitions, when you just don't care, when you're just you, it's liberating, man. It's freedom. You know? You're free. I like my life right now. I'm happy. I'm happy. And they say, like, that's what everyone's just trying to do is get happy. I have nothing right now. I'm at the beginning, but I'm happy. The only thing I own is my guitar. It's only, my only possession. It's the only thing I kept. It's the only thing I need.